Hello VC, James here, welcome to another video. This is a special career retrospective uh, on Thomas Dolby. Um, this was inspired by the thread that's been going around um, artists which don't get much love on the VC. Certainly I've seen very, very little uh, of Thomas Dolby, so um, I thought I would show you my collection, such as it is. Uh, it's not a complete huge collection, but uh, I've got a fair few things, and also just tell you about uh, about Dolby's career, a very notable career really. Um, he is a British uh, new wave artist. He came up in the 1980s. He was a session man on lots of quite important records, and he also produced a couple of very big, uh, you know, famous albums. Uh, but he also had a solo career. Uh, he's made half a dozen albums over the course of a career and he's also done some amazing stuff in the in the worlds of technology and business and so on which I'll talk about uh, a little bit as well. So the album that you will probably, if you know him at all, you'll know will be this one, uh, The Golden Age of Wireless. This was his first hit album and, it, and it's the one that contained uh, this slightly annoying novelty single, She Blinded Me With Science. Okay, so there's more to Dolby than she blinded me with science. So let's um, let's go kind of right back to the start of his career, and I'll tell you something about him, and then I'll show you my um, records and CDs. So he was actually born. His name is Thomas Morgan Robertson, uh, new wave singer songwriter, session musician, and producer extraordinaire, according to Wikipedia. Also a technology entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. He started his uh, kind of musical life, apparently singing uh, in a boys' choir when he was 10 or 11. Uh, and then he became interested in jazz and uh, he was inspired by people such as Oscar Peterson, Dave Brubeck, Bill Evans and Thelonious Monk. And presumably that's where he gets his very sort of uh, sophisticated awareness of chord progressions. One of the great things about Dolby is he came up in that era of kind of keyboard whiz technology but underpinning that is this amazing musical vocabulary. Certainly the jazz technique, I think, that he learned early on certainly seeped into his music. Now the Thomas Dolby stage name originated from a nickname that he picked up in the early 1970s when he was always messing about with keyboards and tapes and so on. His friends nicknamed him Dolby from the name of the audio noise reduction process. And apparently Dolby Laboratories when Thomas Dolby first kind of, you know, became a name, they tried to stop him using the name Dolby unsuccessfully. Now, early in his career, he played keyboards with Bruce Woolley, who had also done work with Trevor Horn and the Buggles. Uh, he played some synth parts on the, uh, on the Thompson Twins album set, and he's also on the first solo album of Robin Hitchcock. Then, I mean, the first big work he did, he was on the 1981 album by Foreigner, uh, the album Four, and he's on the track Urgent. Uh, and the fees from this work actually helped him uh, to pay for the recording cost of his first solo album. Uh, he was also on the 1983 Def Leppard album Pyromania as well, uh, under the alias Booker T. Boffin. So... Then, uh, oh yes, and in, 19, in 1985, he is the co-producer of the Joni Mitchell album, Dog Eat Dog. But then the, the really big first production number that he did, that people will definitely kind of know if they're interested in, in kind of, you know, very high quality British pop music, is the Steve McQueen album by Prefab Sprouts, which is just an absolute classic. He also produced their hit album from Langley Park to Memphis, including the song The King of Rock and Roll. Uh, and then he went on also to produce the Prefab Sprout album, uh, Jordan the Comeback. Now, I'm a huge fan of Prefab Sprout and a huge fan of the songwriter Paddy McAloon. But I've got to say that taken overall, I, I much prefer the albums that were produced by Dolby. Um, I have no idea if his contribution was kind of more than just a producer or an arranger, but it, it's quite strange because I like the Prefab Sprout albums for the same reason that I like the Dolby albums. Something to do with the, just the way the chords are kind of voiced 
and the kind of chords that are used in the arrangements have a real kind of melancholy, emotional feel to them. This is what Dolby really specialises in all the way through his, his work. He has a very British melancholy feel to his music. It's quite good music for listening to, uh, you know, when you're feeling a bit lonely or kind of lovelorn. And that is very, that, that's really clearly in his Prefab Sprout stuff and it's very clearly in his solo work as well. Okay, so let's move on then to his solo career. So this was his first album, The Golden Age of Wireless, uh, and that was released in 1982. Um, it peaked at number 13 on the Billboard album chart. It juxtaposed themes of radio technology, aircraft and naval submarines with those of relationships and nostalgia. And that word, I think, is, is kind of key, really, to Dolby's work. It has a very nostalgic feel to it. It kind of conjures up past eras. He writes a lot about, you know, European history and so on. And his, his work is shot through with this kind of uh, nostalgic, melancholy quality. Now, this record makes a great use, I think, of the Fairlight synthesizer. It's a very synthy record. It contains some fantastic tracks. Uh, I'll see if I can do some needle drops. There's the song Airwaves. Through the airwaves, people never read the airwaves. Do we only feel the airwaves? I really should have seen through the airwaves. And also the song um, One of Our Submarines is Missing. So there we have the golden age of wireless. Then he did a project called uh, Dolby's Cube. Uh, that was in 1983, and that was more of a dance-based thing. Um, it had no set lineup, and it was essentially it was a way for him to release material that was more dance orientated. I don't have anything by Dolby's Cube. So the next album uh, released in 1983 is this one. This is the Flat Earth, and I have this uh, on record. I also have it on CD as well. Now, The Flat Earth is uh, its a slightly less upbeat album than The Golden Age of Wireless. Uh, it contains more kind of downbeat material, um, but some fantastic songs. Uh, quite a nice label, the Parlophone Odeon series. Isn't that a beautiful label? It utilised a wide range of influences, ranging from nostalgic jazz funk Motown R&B and world music as well and it contained all sorts of guest musicians including Robin Hitchcock uh, and Bruce Woolley and the album also included a cover version of the Dan Hicks song I Scare Myself. Now the, the, the most famous cut from this album is Hyperactive. That was uh, initially written and conceived for Michael Jackson, uh, but it was never recorded by uh, by Jacko. But it was a big single from the album. It peaked at number uh, 17 on the UK singles chart, and, and that made it Dolby's highest charting single uh, in the UK. So a very, very fine album and a great follow-up. That's The Flat Earth. Then Dolby did uh, a soundtrack uh, album as Dolby's Cube uh, for Howard the Duck, uh, which was some kind of daft film. It was a split record. Side one was by Dolby and the other side was by John Barry. In 1987, he did another um, film soundtrack which had a more classical feel and that was Gothic. Again, I don't have that as yet. I do have a quite a nice little CD which was put together for me by a friend many years ago uh, that contains a lot of the tracks uh, from those soundtracks. This is in the early days when you could make your own CDs and my friend uh, made me quite a nice one there. That contains some really nice stuff as well, but that's just a kind of, you know, I think there's two copies of that in existence. Um, so that was in 1987, the film Gothic. And then in 1988, he made this album, which I'd love to have on vinyl, but it's very expensive. This is Aliens Ate My Buick. Um, now this, this album was a complete departure in a way. It was much more kind of rock funk and he was he was kind of starting to move away from that kind of synth mad professor thing because a lot of his influences were not from that 
kind of music you know he was he was more kind of rooted in kind of american music kind of you know classic american stuff um classic singer songwriter type things and world music as well funk and rock and so on this is a really great fun album um it's got a really great track on it called the key to her ferrari which is a kind of big whiz bang production number but the first single from the album was airhead uh, which peaked at number 53. It was a satirical song about a young and rich Californian woman. And Hot Sauce, of course, actually was a George Clinton cover version. Uh, that was in 1988. And then in 1992, he produced the last album that he was going to make for a very long time. This is Astronauts and Heretics. And this record saw him moving much more kind of mainstream it has a slightly dated sound. Um, it's got that slightly kind of clattery quality to it that a lot of those kind of late 80s, early 90s albums had. Some of the songwriting as well is, is veering almost into sort of Elton John territory, uh, but it's it's quite a nice album. It has a song called Cruel, featuring a duet with Eddie Reader. The single Close But No Cigar was a kind of minor hit single. It's a nice album. Uh, I'm actually very fond of this album, actually. I wouldn't necessarily recommend people start with this one as you know but it i think just because of you know personal associations i got into dolby when i was kind of in my early 20s and just kind of you know starting out as a musician and so on so i have very fond memories of those records but as in uh, on um, astronauts and heretics uh, it featured eddie van halen playing lead guitar on the track eastern block then, after that record, actually, he did do one more thing before he vanished, and that was the a soundtrack uh, for a film called The Gates to the Mind's Eye. Now, the Mind's Eye series consisted of several art films uh, that were rendered using sort of computer-generated technology, and um, this, is, this is a good, fun soundtrack. Uh, it contains quite a nice track called Quantum Mechanic, which is kind of classic, 80s style Dolby, um, even though this was actually released uh, in 1994, uh, but that's definitely worth having if you ever find it. It's not the kind of thing that you would sort of see in the wild particularly, but um, that's got some good stuff on it. And then Thomas Dolby basically disappeared from music and it turned out that he'd gone into kind of technology. Let me get this straight now. Uh, he basically pioneered the digital polyphonic ringtone for mobile phones. So that must have made him a lot of money. But he spent years doing that. You know, he sort of completely vanished. Um, and it wasn't until 2008 that he went back on the road and he made this live album uh, called The Soul Inhabitants, which kind of reimagined a lot of his early material. This is a fantastic record. When I saw him live, I saw him, in, I saw him at Manchester Academy and it was just him on his own, standing in the middle of a big kind of, you know, bank of keyboards with a headset on, like this. Just, you know, doing it all himself. A really, really, really good gig that was. And this is a fine album containing a lot of his uh, hits from throughout his career in, in slightly more kind of stripped back versions, I suppose, but with some really lovely uh, synth stuff. You know, Dolby is a definite genius of the synth. You know, he's sort of, he's maybe not quite up there with Trevor Horn, but he's definitely got his own take on, on you know, synth sounds. And um, this is a great, really great live record. Uh, so that was the Soul Inhabitant, and that was Dolby's big kind of, you know, comeback. Um, that was in 2008 uh, and then finally we sort of bring things slightly up to date with this record here which came out in 2010 this is Map of the Floating City now, this is a double CD really nice actually you get a CD of the songs and then you get a second CD of uh, instrumental versions of the songs and this really again represents Dolby becoming or kind of evolving into just a kind of good quality straight singer songwriter you know all that early synth stuff is not really there anymore it's uh, it's not exactly middle of the road uh, but it's it's quite kind of mainstream sounding i say that 
what's mainstream anymore you know i don't know what is mainstream there's certainly still some really interesting production touches uh, and it comes with this uh, this map the album is meant to be a kind of weird fictional travelogue it comes with this uh, rather nice map <laughs> And I think that that is to date the last music that Dolby has actually released. The album features Mark Knopfler, Regina Spector, Eddie Reader again, who was on Astronauts and Heretics, and Imogen Heath. And in 2010, he said the new songs are organic and very personal. The album is a travelogue across three imaginary continents. Um, I spent time living in the USA, and my fascination is with American roots music. Um, I think that is the key to Dolby in a way, even though his reputation possibly rests on this kind of very artificial sounding synth music in the early part of his career, he has done a lot of stuff in a kind of roots thing, you know, American R&B and funk, Cajun music as well, there's a Cajun violinist on um, Astronauts and Heretics as well. He's just a very, very diverse artist and certainly one worth checking out. Like I say, I've heard very little about him on the VC. I sent an album to Graham, Grebo69, and he was delighted with it because uh, I think he liked Dolby as well. But apart from Graham, and I think Jorgen has mentioned him, I think people who are into Prefab Sprout kind of know his work. So like Jeff Party, for example, I know will be aware of Thomas Dolby. Whether Jeff knows the solo work, I don't know. We need to talk about that, Jeff. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, my little introduction to Thomas Dolby. One of the greats, in my opinion. Uh, I've always loved his music. I'm a big fan of his. I just wish that he would release music more often. Uh, okay, VC, hope you enjoyed that video. Take care. See you soon. Bye.